Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. Hell fucking yes. Yes, here we are. Welcome back to the playlist. I'm going through every single Indiana Jones movie in the hype up to Dial of Destiny on June 30th. And now we've reached the pinnacle, in my opinion. The Last Crusade, what was believed to be the final Indiana Jones movie, is actually my favorite. Now, I know what you're thinking. Raiders of the Lost Ark is a masterpiece. How could you possibly like this movie over Raiders of the Lost Ark? Now, don't get me wrong. Raiders of the Lost Ark is pretty darn perfect. Temple of Doom, which preceded this movie, was fun enough and unique enough in its own right as a sequel, but the mixed reaction from audiences and critics kind of led Spielberg and Lucasfilm to go back to basics. Even the opening titles using the same font as Raiders, and the way John Williams' magnificent score is interwoven into the opening credits, the fact that the mission is set up essentially with Marcus Brody going into a lecture that Indy is giving some colleagues students and that in itself is using the same framing it feels pretty uniform to Raiders of the Lost Ark and that would normally be a knock on the movie but this is why I prefer The Last Crusade more because I feel like the preceding two Indiana Jones movies don't have the heart that Last Crusade does it brings the character of Indiana Jones who is not your typical hero as I've mentioned it brings him so down to earth. There's a bevy of different ways that they do this that I will get into throughout the course of this video. But, I mean, every single production value, every single actor that came back, Harrison Ford, John Reese davies is Sala, so freaking funny in this movie. I didn't even mention him in the Raiders review. Love Sala as a character. He's so fun. I said no camels, Sala. Well, one of the big ways that this movie really brings our main character down to earth is in its opening, where we see Indiana Jones going on his very first adventure. We see this group of explorers finding the crucifix of Coronado, and they're planning on stealing it. That's not an artifact. It belongs in a museum. But one of these bandits is wearing the identical Indiana Jones leather jacket and fedora, and it's such a great bait and switch because Spielberg does not show us this guy's face until it is, in fact, not Indiana Jones holding the crucifix. And then we cut to a young Indiana Jones who is played by River Phoenix. Such a magnificent talent he was, by the way. May he rest in peace, taken from us far too soon. He was so freaking awesome in this movie. And River Phoenix was actually recommended to Steven Spielberg by Harrison Ford after working with Ford himself on a project called the Mosquito Coast. And River Phoenix was able to get a perfect Harrison Ford impression down pat on set for the Mosquito Coast. And again, he's marvelous here. Really, really good in the action sequence as well in the opening on the circus train, where it sets up Indy's fear of snakes falling into a snake pit. And he winds up taking the crucifix from this explorer who is wearing that fedora. And as young Indy escapes, we see this guy looking at him with a smile like, huh, I like this kid. Apparently that explorer was supposed to be Abner Ravenwood, the father of Marion from Raiders of the Lost Ark. And they cut it. Why? That is such a good idea. It makes so much sense. But here's the big kicker, guys. This is where we're introduced to Indiana Jones's father only by seeing his hands and the fractured relationship that those two share in that opening. And later on, about halfway through, it's revealed that it's the one and only Sean Connery. May he rest in peace. This guy, like, I mean, I know a lot of people love him as Bond. But this actually might be my favorite Sean Connery role. Not only because he's so freaking awesome in this movie, the dynamic that he shares with Indiana Jones himself, father and son, that's what really brings Indy down to earth in The Last Crusade. Because we can all sit there and be impressed by the magnificence of what Indy is doing. And the fact that this guy is pretty damn near invincible. He's pulling off a lot of these stunts in front of his father, and his father is not impressed in the slightest. Not only does that lead to a lot of great comedy, but it makes you feel a lot of sympathy in terms of Indy's upbringing. Because it always felt like he could never make his father proud. That's blasphemy. How did you know she was affiliated with the Nazis? She talks in her sleep. I can only imagine what the screenwriters were doing in the room for The Last Crusade. Yeah, okay, so this is a Sean Connery role. Make sure you have as many S's and H's in his words as possible, okay? Because that's, that's, that's what'll make Sean Connery Sean Connery. I mentioned the comedy. 
Last Crusade is easily the funniest out of all the Indiana Jones movies that we've gotten. Sala, Marcus, Brody both provide a lot of great comedy to the movie. Indy himself is freaking hilarious. There's a scene where they infiltrate this Nazi plane and he tosses a passenger off the side of the ship while he's disguised as this flight attendant. There's no ticket! And then all the passengers pull out their tickets so they're not chucked out the window as well. It's so great. The jokes in Last Crusade land so incredibly well. You know what else lands incredibly well is all these dazzling action sequences. I talked about the opening chase on a circus train involving River Phoenix, but the stunts and everything that went into these action sequences, you really, much like Temple of Doom, you really felt the danger of the situation every single time. Which I think is a good time for me to mention. The main mission of Indiana Jones in this movie is to hunt down the Holy Grail, the goblet that Jesus Christ drank from at the Last Supper. And he is tasked to this by the villain, it turns out, Walter Donovan, played by Julian Glover, who also appeared in The Empire Strikes Back not too long before this. Basically, Donovan has a desire for immortality while secretly working with the Nazis for the same goal. It really does feel like Raiders 2. Spielberg brings back the Nazis as villains, and they're searching for ultimate power and immortal glory. And you definitely feel the stakes with every passing scene and every passing action sequence. And Spielberg really helps to sell the danger of a lot of these sequences by implementing wide shots here. I'm thinking of the fantastic chase sequence on a boat, where Spielberg has Indy and his enemy in a wide, and this boat is inching closer and closer to a gigantic propeller, and it's getting destroyed with every passing second that Indy does not get this information. Like, Last Crusade, I mean, this movie is untouchable. You also have a fascinating love interest, Elsa Schneider, played by Allison Duty. She's an art professor who is actually in league with the Nazis. And it's so great because it feels like she's going to team up with them, really doesn't feel like she's someone who can be trusted. Now, getting back to these action sequences, it feels like all these entries so far have had that defining action sequence that really makes it stand out. Raiders had the truck chase, Temple of Doom had the minecar chase, this one has the tank chase. And I gotta give credit once again to Harrison Ford where it's due because he's doing a lot of his own stunts here. And the choreography and the blocking of this sequence is just so genius. Indy shooting three Nazis with one single bullet. Which again, this is a very bloody Indiana Jones movie. The first to be actually rated PG-13 after Spielberg fought so hard for it after Temple of Doom. Which brings me to another thing. You feel the stakes in this action sequence a lot more so than the previous two movies. Because his father's on board. Doesn't want his father to die. Even though the relationship is very much fractured and Sean Connery is never impressed with anything Harrison Ford is doing. Still cares about him and he still wants to save him. And it actually ends up with this tank falling off a gigantic cliff with one of the best death screens you will ever hear. John Williams' score also really helps sell the danger of the moment as well. Fantastic editing that should not be overlooked because Indy's fedora actually naturally falls off his head during this sequence. And it actually kind of makes you think, oh, this is symbolism for Indy dying here. And that leads to what I think is the most emotionally heartfelt moment in the entire saga. Sean Connery as Henry Sr. is looking over this cliff at the rubble of what he thinks is his son's demise. And then his son casually walking up to be next to the group and everything like that. The look of relief on Sean Connery's face will bring a tear to your eye. He is just so freaking happy that his son is still with him. Also, not gonna lie, this is a Lucas film after all. Harrison Ford hugging his father kind of reminded me of the hug that Chewie gave Han Solo in the original Star Wars trilogy. Yeah, Dad, I'm all right. I'm all right. It is just such a phenomenal dynamic between those two. It's a great balance between the emotional stuff and the comedic stuff. Dad! Dad! Fireplace, Dad! But this brings me to my personal favorite third act of the indie movies in general. The Raiders' third act is fantastic. Indy's pretty shackled for a lot of it, though. He's tied up to a post with Marion. Here, he's actually going to explore, and he's going to find the Grail after Donovan shoots his father in the stomach. And the Grail is the only thing that can heal his father. You have chosen wisely. The Last Crusade is just one of those movies that keeps on giving in the fun factor. I cannot help but be mesmerized by it every single time I pop it on. All the production values, all the performances notwithstanding. This is my favorite Indiana Jones movie because it's got the heart and soul that I feel like the last two movies didn't have enough of compared to this. Which, don't get me wrong, I'm not knocking Raiders. It's one of the most influential and one of the greatest action movies ever made. 
I just prefer The Last Crusade more because I feel like the stakes are higher, the emotion is so much more relevant, and it brings the Indiana Jones character so much more down to earth. I love this movie. I always have. I always will. This is my favorite of the series so far. I'm going to give Indiana Jones and The Last Crusade an A+. <sighs> Oh my god, guys. I love looking back on these old movies. Ah, it's so fun. But let me know what you thought of The Last Crusade down in the comments section below. Is this your favorite Indiana Jones movie? Do you prefer Raiders of the Lost Ark? Because I totally understand if you do. But let's discuss it all down in the comments section below. I love discussing all brand new things in movies and entertainment on the regular. So if you're new, you're invited to the party. What the heck are you waiting for? Smash that subscribe button and please tap on that like button as well. This really helps with the algorithm and helps spread this content out there to more lovely viewers like you. But guys, that's it. No more Indiana Jones movies in the build up to Dial of Destiny. And uh, stay tuned for my review of Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Steven Spielberg is the greatest of all time when it comes to directors, in my opinion. But there's cases where he can't be a miracle worker all the time. But that should be fun, guys. Very cathartic for a lot of us, I'm sure, before Dial of Destiny comes out. Thank you so much again for tuning in. And with all that being said, Back Talk, commence.